Good day and welcome along to Al's Geek Lab. I am Al and uh, today I thought I would take a break from the usual uh, videos and um, show you one of the big box games I have. Um, recently acquired Leisure Suit Larry 3. Now if uh, you've watched my videos in the past you'll know I'm a big fan of all the all game Sierra, love Sierra games and in fact uh, I interviewed the previous CEO of um, Sierra, or the president, his name was Ken Williams. And Ken and his wife started Roberta, uh, Roberta. Uh, they started Sierra in 19, I think, 79, I think that was about right. And um, this game came out in 1989. And so it was around the time this came out that the company was celebrating their first decade of computer games. Um, Mystery House was the very first game, and that was for none other than the Apple II, this computer behind me here. So uh, then they went in uh, when the IBM came along, and they came along with a great deal for their first computer, uh, the first sort of uh, affordable home computer, the IBM PC Junior, which was a big flop, but the Tandy series sort of saved... Um, uh, Sierra because uh, even though the the money was gifted to um, Sierra by by IBM for the PC Junior the IBM PC Junior market was so poor that I don't think that uh, Sierra would have really lasted much longer had it not been for the success of the clone the Tandy and of course the many 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 computers uh, PC clones at the time so anyway that long story that I'm saying here this game here came out at the 10 year anniversary. And so um, it says um, on the bottom here, it says genuine tacky postcards, uh, tacky island postcard, and fabulous, fascinating, far out and colorful non tonight magazine. But there was also one other thing in this, which I found quite interesting. And following my interview with um, Ken Williams, I thought it was also quite interesting to read through. So I'm going to show you that right now before we even get on to playing the game Leisure Suit Larry. I do really love the box art that these games came in. Um, I've always thought the Larry ones uh, was really good, but all of the box art on the Leisure Suit Larry games and most of the Sierra games actually was really good. Um, so there's a bit of a description on the back of the box. Um, how you play both as Le uh, as Larry Laffer um, and then as Patty in this game. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll talk more about the game later on, but I thought I'd open the box. Sorry about the messy desk, it's had a very messy keyboard on it. And in the box we have, of course, the game discs. So it came on double density 720k, so that was... Uh, four discs there and also came on eight count them uh, and I'm assuming they are actually just um, double density five and a quarter inch discs um, is there an easy way to tell I, can't, I forget anyway there's no notch in these so you can't write to them uh, but yeah um, they came in both five and a quarter and three and a half at this point in time in Sierra's career. So obviously um, this is when they'd moved over to the SCI um, system. So they were no longer on AGI. So even Leisure Suit Larry 2, I think, was on um, the SCI system, Sierra Creative Game Interpreter. So this is this little tacky postcard that they were talking about, <laughs> which is quite cool. The Island of Nontunit. Nontunit? I think I've seen that right. Please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Pictured on the reverse, Nontunai Island native wildlife on Waikiki Beach, a favourite spot for natives and tourists alike. That's Suit Larry 3 distributed by Sierra Online. Um, what's that say? 1989. Yeah, I was right, 1989. So there you go. I don't know if that's Passionate Patty. Is that Passionate Patty? Yeah, it is Passionate Patty. Anyway, warranty registration card, and then of course the game manual, Nontunai tonight your guide to the island and so forth and I'll get back to that in a minute um, but there's some little jokes and um, 
information in there which uh, I guess the makers of the game would claim were important to know in order to complete the game like for example this information about um, grass weaving and lay making but what I wanted to show you was this here the 10th anniversary uh, booklet from Sierra it's got some very ominous uh, looking circuitry on the front here you think oh goodness what's that but if you look at the text below it says an original Apple one with Sierra's mystery house so that gives you an idea of what they're going to cover within this 10th anniversary booklet guide so basically what they're saying is um, that's where it all began um, I thought that it was on the Apple 2 myself I didn't think it was on an Apple 1 um, but maybe maybe that means that King Williams had a Apple 1 and he made it work with Mystery House I'm not really quite sure but in any case it looks cool for the cover art of the magazine which obviously hasn't been thumbed through very much because it's kind of um, clean and unopened kind of feeling. Um, what I really like here is um, you've got you know the pictures of Ken there, this is the President's Corner it says up here. <laughs> um, pictures of Ken and also Roberta over here on the other side. So um, I think you know booklets like this you know that showed all the catalogue of games were quite common in all of the um, Sierra games and the big box games at the time they would they would give you a you know a kind of update as to where they were um, that was a Sierra thing and I think Ken talked about that in the um, in the interview I did with them uh, last year but um, this one I think is kind of nice because it's really talking about um, something that Ken talked about as well about how Ken was a serious programmer, or considered himself a serious programmer. He was not a games guy. He didn't do games at all. Um, in fact, it was his wife, Roberta, who convinced him to make Mystery House for, I consider, the Apple II. So, we go over here, it says, Over the last ten years, Roberta and I have received thousands of letters from customers, compliments from fans, suggestions from users, and occasional complaint letters are still routed to us as I work hard to make sure each gets read and responded to. Through the letters we've received, we've got good suggestions on game improvements and so forth. Um, and then he goes on to say, this one was dated May 23rd, 1981. So right at the very beginning of the days of Sierra. Um, and that would be obviously in the Apple days because Sierra weren't making games for the PC until uh, around 1984 when IBM came to them with the PC Junior and of course the PC itself I don't even think was out until September or October of 1981 so this was definitely well before the PC and it goes on to say this is the quote from the letter I had a well publicized airplane crash in February fortunately we are all doing well and I still enjoy flying I have no memories of the crash or, five week, or the five weeks following total amnesia but I've been told of the crash and the hospital stay Pictures show me in the hospital playing on an apple with your new game, which I was totally unable to put down. Thank you to you so much for the happiness that you have brought into my life. I hope that you find no bounds to your creativity. Sincerely, Steve Woz Wozniak. So that was a big deal, obviously, coming from the creator of the Apple computer itself, the Apple One and also the Apple Two and the 2GS later on. Uh, those who are familiar with Apple computers uh, history recognize the name S Steve Wozniak as the creator of the original Apple computer. For me, Steve was like a hero of the first degree, the consummate hacker, a uh, successful businessman, and a genuinely nice guy. The letter came to me at a very important time in my life when I originally envisaged starting a business to publish software. I wanted to write serious business applications. Roberta was a game, the games advocate and I sort of thought that they were silly. To be honest, I was even a little embarrassed that all of the business and companies that I've been involved with, my most successful venture came from computer games. So it really does show that you know, Ken wanted to be this serious looking business dude and he wanted to write serious software and it wasn't until sort of Steve Wozniak, you know, the, the, the creator of this very, or a co-creator of this very 
important computer company called Apple Computer had actually come to him and said, hey, I love your games, I love what you're doing, stop, don't stop doing it. That really it came to, to be something important to him. In his letter, Steve let me know that what I was doing had a lot of value. The text of the letter stressed to me to how happy he was that companies like mine were building fun, creative applications. He even said that our game was the closest application to to that for which I really designed the computer. It made me feel a whole lot more comfortable with the path that the company was taking. The support of a man like Woz really gave me pride in what I was doing at a time when I really needed it. So there you go. And if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't have had games, you know, all the way into the, even the 21st century, like games like, um, well, late, late 90s, sorry, Half-Life, I think was one of the last games that they released under the Sierra um, Entertainment um, name, but obviously Half-Life is a very important title. So even, you know, games that people can recognize today, but titles such as the Space Quest series before then, Leisure Suit Larry, of course, King's Quest being their sort of first PC outing, uh, the Police Quest series, if you played those. And these are these are lovely little sort of flashbacks. They go right back to the beginnings of all of the games. So there's the first Police Quest, and then it will show you, you know, the uh, you know, I remember the, the driving the car in the first, the first sort of AGI, EGA version of Police Quest was absolutely horrendous. The controls were horrible. Um, but yeah, it shows you Police Quest 1, Police Quest 2, um, and uh, and so forth. So that it shows you the, the new, I can't remember Iceman at all, it shows you the newer um, games that they were, they had just released. So obviously this kind of shows a, um, a nice little list of all of the games sort of that they'd come out from Sierra pretty much over that decade. Um, so You Want to Be a Hero, and this was when it was called Hero's Quest, it wasn't even called Quest for Glory, they had to change the name due to copyright reasons. And there's the Sierra order form, you could order all of the games by the looks of it. King's Quest 1, this is for a Apple, Apple 2 GS, and there's the Apple 2, so you could, yeah look, you could still get mixed up Mother Goose, and um, smart money <laughs> for 80 bucks. I don't know how much of a good investment that was. I don't know how many people actually ended up buying smart money. But um, yeah, there's Conquest of Camelot. But if I go to near the end, um, there's some interesting articles. There's a Legend of Larry once. Some interesting articles at near the end to so the, the action games. There's a short history of Sierra with with their you know acquisitions in Japan and the uh, Thexter series. Thexter's Sierra's first Japanese import is a hit in America. So yeah, really, um, you know, they did business uh, in Japan and that really was a turning point for them as well with games like Thexter and Silphied as well. Um, it really was a, you know, a change in direction for them that they went into. Um, and then there's this productivity software where obviously Ken was still dabbling in um, you know, products that were made for, you know, serious applications, not games. So, um, you know, there's this uh, product um, like HomeWord here, word processor products, and there was um, financial software as well, as you saw, smart money, there you go. And then this here, um, which I find interesting, which is the Sierra Online product, which was basically comm software at this point in time. But obviously, Sierra later went on to do the INN, the, um, the, uh, the the gaming network, the Sierra network. Sierra, Sierra, I can't remember what the Sierra online network was, but it was a, a gaming network. But this is just comm software, like, um, like like a terminal software. So they obviously started out um, with that. So it supported only up to from 300 to 9600 baud modems. So really, sort of early comm software there. Uh, and then uh, talks about hardware as well. They were really, it's, it's hard to think, but back in this day, you know, companies like Sierra, really Sierra themselves, were the pioneers in, in early multimedia. They made support for music cards in games before pretty much any other company was doing it, right? So they supported AdLib and then later the, you know, the Sound Blaster series. But also the Roland series. Roland, they brought—I think they brought a partnership even to the um, 
to to the PC with with Roland. So they they really invested in these early multimedia um, things very very early on in all in all of their games. So yeah, you could use the Roland MT32 sound module. What's this say? Free entertainment software when you order from Sierra. So just very, very interesting to see that Sierra, you know, even though other companies like Epix and Activision had started supporting um, other uh, products such as AdLib and the Game Blaster and Roland, you can see that Sierra were quite um, happy to say that they supported all three platforms. You could buy mugs and t-shirts. I wouldn't mind getting my hand on one of those. I thought that was a cool little snapshot of Sierra at the time. Uh, Ten years into their still successful career and they, I mean obviously 1999 was towards the end of the Sierra adventure or journey but um, you know it, it, uh, you know, they, they, they did span um, just over two decades in, um, in time. So it's a wonderful little um, tidbit to see and it's in good nick so I'll be keeping that. So as promised I will um, set up the game here and I'll have a quick show of what it looks like on a real IBM PC of its era. So this here is the uh, my, my happy famous um, IBM PC XT286. So if we run the installer, um, you can see um, just the choices that we have. Obviously, the this this age of Sierra game, the best you could get was the um, either the EGA VGA 16 color, or it, it said it supported the PS2 model uh, with the 16256 color. But I'm pretty sure the game only outputted 16 colors. So even though your machine supported 256 color, I'm pretty sure the game was only a 16 color game um, and of course this one did support um, all as per that magazine there the sound blaster the Roland MT32 which would have sounded the best game blaster and also if you're um, poor and didn't have any sound card then of course then you were stuck with um, with the IBM PC speaker so I'll use the sound blaster but it's um, I think it's just an ad-lib and this you can choose to use a joystick I don't think I ever used a joystick with um, Sierra game. Um, you can use a mouse, although they're just pointers in the SCI and the AGI. In fact, they weren't even supported in AGI, it was just SCI. Um, apparently, I've got extra memory, um, which I do in this machine, but I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that it actually accepts this as an option, so it'll be interesting. But uh, yeah, but there, there's the sort of options that you could choose from at the time. Um, and it does have a mouse, I just haven't loaded the mouse driver. Um, this is cool, it says if you've not sent in your warranty registration card which you saw in the box, obviously uh, the previous owner of this, um, this box did not. Um, it says um, if you live in the continental USA or Canada, which I don't, you'll be able to receive three free issues subscription to Interaction, the quarterly Sierra news magazine which contains valuable coupons, contests, great articles and so forth. So that, that was pretty cool. Um, so then uh, back to DOS now and if I think we just type in Sierra that will start the game off. So this is my IBM PC XT286 um, which is a 6 megahertz machine. Now if we look at the box here it recommends 8 megahertz or faster. Um, so this isn't quite up to snuff for this, but I don't think it matters too much. I think you can still play it quite, quite well. Let me turn the volume up. Apparently, that's as loud as it goes.
I'm sorry about the screen flare, I can't seem to fix that problem. I was trying with the shutter speeds to get it to uh, 150th so that it would sync with the monitor but for whatever reason I just can't seem to get it to sync. The villagers eager to shed their Stone Age lifestyle united themselves by forming Natives Inc. TM to protect their interests and develop their island, realising they were sitting on a yuppie dream, a vein of gold they could mine through tourism. Here we go. Learning modern construction techniques through self-help books and pirated video takes, takes off this old house they began by building a hotel. And there's somebody who looks a bit like Larry building up a hotel there. Borrowing heavily from investors, they expanded into some very attractive tourist traps. I think I pressed enter at the wrong time there and jumped past the, the intro. Sorry about that. Welcome to Leisure Suit Larry 3, Passionate Patty in Pursuit of the Pulsating Pectorals. Warning, this game contains some material which may be deemed offensive by some players. If you are offended by adult situations, vulgar language, ethnic humour, sexual innuendo or pixelated nudity, you'll be happier playing another game. I'm going to watch PBS. Try and offend me. What is your age? Oh well, sadly, I'm going to have to say I'm over 25. Now back in the day, I would ask you to answer five simple questions, which indeed it has. <laughs> I'll see, see if I can get these right. Now in the original Larry, I can't remember if in Larry 3 you could get past these questions by pressing Alt-X. But uh, let me just see if I can answer these questions just, to, just for shits and giggles. In the 60s television show, Uncle stood for... Um, it was the man from Uncle, right? Underground National Council for Large Ear Lobes, no. United Network Command for Law Enforcement. Uh, United Naval Commission for Leaders of Europe. I don't think it's that. And Truth, Justice in the American Way. It must be B. Um, and uh, the little uh, card there. The lady lost some clothing there. Vertigo is... Well, I know what Vertigo is because I have Vertigo. Um, it's, I had it for a whole year and I'm still suffering from a bit of it myself. So I can answer that one uh, very, very truthfully. Uh, and it's a balanced disorder of the inner ear. What? <laughs> Come on! Oh, no. Vertigo is also a Hitchcock movie. But it is most definitely a, a medical condition. Come on, game. This is not good. Watergate is a hotel. A condominium is a prophylactic for midgets. A small supermarket. Apartment you can purchase the smallest size. I'm going to go for C. Apartment you can purchase. Yep, she's lost some more clothes. Good. Which was not a 60s rock group. The Who, The Stones, The Beatles, or The Bangles. That was The Bangles. They were the 80s. Hey, I actually am over 25. You're so bright. You got four out of five correct. Therefore, you get to play this game at really filthy level. So, does that mean if I got all five right, I would have um, I would have played it disgustingly filthy or something like that? I can't remember. So now I'm going to flip over and uh, I'm just... Uh, I just wanted to show you the beginning of Larry anyway. I don't want to play the whole game. We could maybe play through the game uh, in a sort of stream at one point, I think. But, um, yeah. I thought it might be interesting for you to see that manual, the box, and uh, that, you know, the 10 year, the 10 year guide. You can notice how fat Larry has got. You know, he's got uh, pretty chilled out gotten pretty uh, the vista point bronze plaque lies near to two pair of binoculars let's have a look at this plaque I got a point on this site the great hero of our people Larry Laffer single handedly Saved our island from our mortal enemy, the evil Dr. Nonuki. <laughs> and there's a picture of a perhaps slightly thinner looking, chiseled Larry Laffer. Thanks. Right, okay. Okay. Stop. 
looking. I got two points for looking at my plaque there. Let's have a look through the the the, the binoculars. Look. Okay, here we go. Oh, I remember this, of course. I would be probably, I don't know, in my teenage years, early teenage years, maybe 13 or 14. And so, depending on how um, well you answered those questions, um, <laughs> at the beginning, um, <laughs> de depended on how much of a show you got here. So, I'll avert, I'll avert your eyes. Oh dear. So yeah, if you were, if you were really, if you're really good with those questions at the beginning, then I think the the blinds wouldn't come down at all. I think I remember that. There you go. And I got two more points for that. Look at Larry looking cool in his shades. This manual is very. Uh, it's not been thumbed, um, which is nice. It's always nice to get a unthumbed manual. It says help without this guide you'll be lost and uh, if we look through here um, there's the various boring stuff like how to install it and so forth which is all fairly good. Passionate Patty and uh, Legislative Larry 3 produced and designed by Al Lowe, programmed by Al Lowe, Carlos Escobar and uh, a cast of thousands. Macintosh translation by Bai. Okay. BYE? I don't know. So there's some some of these hints down down there um, in the manual, and I'm pretty sure that's some form of sort of copy protection. So if you didn't have the manual, you'd have to get this information from somewhere else. I think there's something in here. I, I can't remember some of the puzzles somewhere, but these help. So you have to. I think you have to make a grass skirt. I think. Um, so grass weaving, lay making, wood carving. I think that's all relevant to the game. Um, and then there's a community calendar. So I think all of these things have some sort of relevance within the game. Um, but when I had it, when I was a kid, this game, um, so I say a kid, I was about probably 12 or 13, um, I'm pretty sure that it was a completely pirated version, and I don't know if I had like a photocopy of this or whether I just, just didn't have it. Um, some of these things are relevant, um, and some of them are just humorous. Now appearing by nightly, the lovely talented star of the stage, the screen, and the backstage is everywhere. Cherry tart. <laughs> if you show your pass to the maitre d for an evening, you'll never forget. So you need to uh, get eight pairs of panties for one cent. And of course, Dale Carsonian, the Chippendales all male burlesque review, known as the Tom Jones of non tonight. Freddy's Feral Barbecue. We go whole hog for you. It's interesting. Um, and then the, this here, I'm pretty sure that's some sort of form of uh, copyright protection. The boss, the boss screen. Now I remember that there was a boss screen in Legacy of Larry 1, the first one. And if you press Control B, it would, um, or something like that, it would give you this sort of uh, lovely bar chart um, of different types of flavours of condoms and uh, whether <laughs> the whether ribbed or lubed made any difference and of course that was highly inappropriate and if your boss saw that you would probably lose your job um, but to add salt to that wound um, when um, when you try to escape out of it it would say oh I can't remember how to get back out of this um, sorry you're stuffed which was um which was not much fun. Um, do we cheat him and how the attorneys at law like I like the name, the witch doctor. 
hair restoration, colour consultation makers, oh, makeovers are speciality. And uh, that looks like Al Lowe right there. Uh, slightly younger Al Lowe. Yesterday I was a loser and a bore. And then, today I'm a real cool guy. Thanks, witch doctor. <laughs> it's always nice to look through these old manuals. You just don't get stuff like that um, anymore. There you go. There's um, The sun's really coming in now, so it's completely overexposed. I'll try and sort that out for you. Um, Fat City. Try our naughty lust machines for a real workout. And I think that's Allo doing some dressing up there with a um, little pocket protector. So here's the before and the after pictures here. <laughs> a couple of real cool guys. And then on the back, unlimited mileage. Hearts rent a bike. The only way to explore the island. Love it. So um, let me know in the comments if you would like me to actually do a playthrough of Leisure Suit Larry 3 for MS-DOS. I would be more than happy to do so. It's a long game um, and it actually has 4,000 points. Uh, so quite, quite a few points to get through on the game. Um, I think you can c complete it in a couple of hours, uh, maybe three or, three or four hours, something like that, I don't know. Um, but I've seen uh, DOS Gamer T, um, Bart, I think Bart, Bart's his name, I think he's he's done whole games of that length way, way many times. So, um, yeah, let me know if you're interested in that. So that is Leisure Suit Larry 3. Um, and uh, just showing off the big box and uh, and not really a review of the game but um, definitely the game itself was um, really important to me as a, <laughs> as a kid as were all of the, the Larry games um, anyway uh, thanks very much for watching uh, let me know what you think uh, in the comments and also I'd love to uh, hear from you um, and also don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Until next time, I will see you again. Cheers.